All right, so we've talked quite a bit at, already in the other two videos regarding how to use um, linear approximations to make estimations of specific points. And we want to generalize this process, process given a function f of x and a number c such that f of c is known, how do we estimate f of a for some other number? Okay, so let's answer this question. So we want to estimate f of a, right? But, and we know f of c. So in the previous example, um, in the previous examples that we've done, this is like saying, oh, what is, uh, what is the square root of 16.3? Okay. So in this case, like a would be equal to 16.3. So a would be equal to 16.3. Uh, f would be equal to the square root function. And then c, like the point that such that f of c is known uh, in our previous examples way back in the two videos ago, c would have been equal to 16. And so we want to estimate the square root of 16.3. We have this function, that's the square root function. We don't, we don't know what the square root of 16.3 is, so we use some other point that we know for sure as a way to help us estimate the point that we don't know. Now the last, the second part of this question asks, how do we know whether the estimate, oh, um, I'm sorry, we haven't actually answered the first question. How do we estimate it? Well, we find the tangent line, right? Remember we find the tangent line? to f to the function f at x equals c. So let's call that tangent line uh, y of x. Then we can conclude that f of a, which is the value that we're really trying to find, is approximately equal to y of a. And the tangent line, we can write it this way. This is really equal to uh, the slope using point slope form. So the slope at C times x minus C plus y of C. So that this quick uh, equation here bears and requires a little bit of explanation. I'm sorry, not y of c. That would be quite a lot more, even more explanation. f of c is what I meant to write here. This should say plus f of c. So y of x is approximately, is exactly equal to f prime of c times x minus c plus f of c. So let me explain where that came from, um, just in case you don't quite get it. So in point slope form, we know that y is y minus f of c is going to equal to the slope f prime of c times x minus c. So keep in mind that the point that we're using to estimate here is C f of C. That's the point that we're using. The slope that we find is f prime of C. And in point slope form, it looks like this. So when we rewrite it, we just take f of C and move it to the other side. And we get this short and succinct. Um, I don't know how succinct it is, but it's a little bit simpler to, to look at than this one. And if we wanted to find the value of f of a, f of a, we know that it's approximately equal to y of a. In other words, we're going to take out x and substitute a in there. So you know, y of a in this case would be equal to f prime of c times a minus c plus f of c. 
So y of a is equal to this, and that's approximately equal to f of a. So that's uh, the answer to our first question, how do we estimate? And the answer to our second question, is it an overestimate or an overapproximation or an underestimation? Well, remember for that problem, we have to check concavity. Concavity is the reasoning and the solution to that problem. So if it is concave up, what's going on here? If the, the graph of f is concave up at c, in other words, the second derivative at c is positive, it's concave up, so you have some curve like this, whoops, not, not like that, that's concave down. If it is concave up, so like, more like this, then what you're going to have is an under approximation. An under approximation. And if you have it the other way around where f double prime at c is negative, so it is concave down, so like this, and you have that tangent line going through, then it's going to be an over approximation. An over approximation. So there's a lot of stuff here that I said that maybe to you might be common sense. Um, but this is a way to formalize and to explain everything in a little bit of greater detail and also uh, uh, just for you to, to understand what's going on behind the scenes here, that we're, we're doing some sort of approximation. We don't know the exact answer, but we can actually predict what the answer is and we can predict whether we are over or under. So that's it for this lesson. For this part of the lesson, I'm going to have you try one more example there on your own. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.